I'm here in Taunton at Coker Engineering. Now these guys are performance driven, they need reliability, but they certainly need flexibility. And this is why DMG Mori are their perfect machining partner. Charles, thanks for the invitation down at Coco Engineering down in Torton. Now, I'm very impressed with the size of uh, the company that you are. You've got a lot, a lot of machines here, but tell me a little bit about Coca. So we're a pure subcontract manufacturer. We've been trading now for the best part of 40 years. Family owned, predominantly into aerospace and automotive work, but we're about big batch, repeat, long term, committed volume work. Now, principally, we're here on behalf of DMG Murray. You, uh, I can see you know, a couple of big investments here. You've got this NZX2000, now triple turret turning application. Now, are you putting some hard materials through this? So we've seen a significant amount of growth in the past three years, particularly in both aero and auto. A lot of steel business, a lot of tough steel. We cut a massive volume of EN24T and tougher from there. And really what we needed was new plant that was reliable, robust, you know, where we knew we could hit those metals hard all day long, but rely on them to be still stood up doing that 10, 15, 20 years later. So, so really this, this machine here has, has become a very big tool within, you know, get finding new work effectively. Yeah, absolutely. This is a, another string to our bow. The capability of the machine behind me puts the rest of our turning plant in the shade. You know, we run some other complex lathes, but this takes it to a whole new level. You know, the capability of this thing, 12,000 RPM on the driven tool, the amount of torque and grunt behind those driven tools. You know, we're running end mills on this lathe tougher than we run them on some of our VMCs, cut an EN 24T. You know, we look at this machine, this machine to us is a bar fed, triple turret milling machine. It's making prismatic parts all day long, not conventional turn parts. And does that make you a little bit different uh, as the company, you know, looking for that sort of batch work, but really sort of high tolerances, but also hard materials? So to me, tight work, tough materials, if you want to be competing in this business, in this country, that's the work you've got to be going after. You know, forget chasing brass work and, and you know, hundreds of thousands of, that work isn't coming back here ever. You know, Brexit, no Brexit, that work's not coming back to this country. So we look at what's out there and we cut our cloth accordingly. Now to me, that means we need machines that are capable, that can run 18, 19, 20 plus hours a day with a limited amount of man input required and keep knocking out parts that are held to within microns. There's a bore on this part behind me being interpolated, six mil end mil, 12 mil long bore being interpolated to seven microns. It sits there all day long, it doesn't move. And that's the kind of reliability we need in our plant to give our customers what they expect. And talking about other investments, you talk about automation, big theme at EMO, and also DMG Moria open houses. You've got the NHX 4000 machine with the RPS21 uh, pallet solution. Now, that must be a bit of a game changer for you guys. Absolutely. So within no more than two months of getting that machine on site, we had it clocking 120 hours a week, week in, week out, like clockwork. But at the same time, it only actually required 15, 20 hours of man labour a week. You know, it's load, unload. Yes, we need the volume, we need the right work to suit it. We've got it pretty well stocked up at the moment, but we have got further capacity available on that machine. And to be honest with you, if I was in the market for another horizontal, I don't think I'd be looking at anything else. And when you look at uh, the service and back app from DMG Mori, I mean, that is critical for, for companies like yours, but with this type of machine, so you need that, I suppose. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. I'd argue that as a sub -E, we probably push our machines harder and expect more of our machines than a lot of OEMs do. And if you don't know for a fact that you can get someone on the end of a phone, night or day, to back you up when you've got a problem, that's a major issue. Now, with both machines, we've had our teething issues when they come in, as you'd expect with a new piece of plant that's this complex but the backup and support we've had from Murray can't fault it, second to none. And sort of moving on, I mean, obviously a huge investment with the uh, new factory here. Uh, I presume within time, more machines, but do you actually have capacity at this present time? We do currently, not a vast amount, um, but then we are looking at changing our shift pattern moving into the new year, which will free up a good 20, 30% additional capacity on top of what we're running at the moment. And we are actively looking to, and talking to people to fill that capacity. And one final thing, I mean, when you invest in the, your very high-tech machines like you've got here, and they are very different from your, your general subcontracting companies, what sort of message would you give any companies looking to outsource really, really sort of tough, either materials or components? What would be your message to them? 
So if you've got work that other people have struggled with in the past, that's always where we've won. We get our foot in the door with the difficult job. When you see how good we are at the difficult job, then let's start talking about all the other stuff where we can probably beat the other guys as well. So really, in the future, you might be expanding into the rest of your factories here? Absolutely. So we're only using about two thirds of this building at the moment. I have ambitions to be using the whole thing inside of five or six years tops. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thanks, Giles. Thanks very much.